Uh, my name is Xiang Zhe Xu. I'm a second year PhD student from Purdue University. Today, I'm extremely excited to talk about our work on extracting protocol formats as state machine via controlled static loop analysis. Basically, we use state static analysis to extract state machines from the source code that implement parsers. The first author, Qin Kai Shi, cannot be here due to a visa issue that I'm presenting for him. And Professor Xiang Yuzhang provided invaluable instructions for this project. My talk is organized as follows. First, I'm going to briefly discuss about how state machines are used in real-world applications. Then I'm going to discuss the limitations of existing technique with concrete examples. After that, I will briefly introduce our approach and how we evaluate our technique. Finally, I will conclude my talk with several takeaway messages. So state machines have been widely used in real-world applications. For example, a software system that implements a network protocol may use state machines to communicate with each other. For another example, the robotics system may leverage state machines to control the system states, and it uses state machines to decide how the system would interact with the environment. And last but not least, there's a special kind of parser that are typically implemented as state machines. And these parsers are usually used to parse the regular expression like the messages. And these regular expression like the messages are widely used in the real world network protocols, and they are very important. A state machine-based parser has many advantages over the parsers implemented otherwise. And one of, the most, one of the most advantages of it might be the high performance and lower latency. It's because a state machine-based parser do not have to wait for all the messages, for the entire messages, before the parsing process starts. That means a state machine-based parser can take an input at, from the input stream as soon as the input byte arrives. And after that, it will update the system state and the doing processing, maybe record the states. And after that, it's ready to take the next input. And this process will iteratively go on until all the input bytes are consumed. Due to its high performance, it's been widely used in many critical systems like the routers or the robotic systems. Next, I'm going to use a specific example to, dis uh, to illustrate how we as software developers would implement a state machine use source code. Suppose that we want to implement a parser for the regular expression. The regular expression would start, begin, uh, would start from a sequence of A or B, and it will end with a character C. An example state machine is shown on the right-hand side. It has four possible states. The first state is state A, it's the start state. After it captures the character A and B, it will be translated to state B or state C. These two states iteratively read in more character A and character B until they captured a character C. After that, the state machine will be in the final state, state D, indicating the end of parser. Typically, such a state machine will be implemented as a huge loop with the control of several state variables, as shown on the left-hand side. Here at the second line is the state variable called state, and the loop is defined at the third line. The state variables are typically used to dispatch the execution to different paths in the iteration. And for the different path, it's implemented logic corresponding to a specific state. Let's take a close look at, uh, let's take a close look at the code implementing the state A. At the sixth line, the state machine reads in an input byte from the input stream. And after that, the state machine checks whether the input byte is character A or B. If the input byte is character A, the state will be translated to B, as indicated in the blue shade. And similarly, if the input byte is character B, the state will be translated to C, as indicated in the red shade. We can see that the state variables, along with the input bytes, to, both of them together decides the behavior of the state machines, decides the behavior of the state machine. And the goal of our work, state lifter, is to lift in a higher level representation as shown in the middle from the software implementations as shown on the left. This is, however, generally a very challenging task due to the following two reasons. The first reason is that for many state machines, there might be more than one state variables 
And even worse, some of the state variables might not have enumerable values. <laughs> Next, uh, let's gonna use a, a bit more complex example to illustrate the challenges. Now suppose that we want to recognize a non-empty token between the carrot symbol and the colon symbol. For example, here, the token we want to recognize is XYZ ABC. We show one of the possible implementations with two state variables, and one of them is string type. That means it do not have enumerable values. Let's take a close look at it. The variable state is the first state variable. It's defined as the third line. It has three enumerable values. The first possible value is TOK. That indicates the parser is trying to take an input. And the second possible value is OK, indicating that the parser ends with the correct state. That means the input message is have good format. In other cases, the state, the state machine will end in the error state, indicating the input string is ill, form, is Ill formed. It's apparently not enough to use only one variable with three possible values to parse our input because we have additional requirements for the input string. That is, we want the token to be non-empty. Thus, we further define a variable TOK to store the historical characters we read in from the input bytes. The TOK is initialized as an empty string at the fourth line. And for example, at the tenth line, if the input character is a colon symbol, the state machine will check whether the string stored in TOK is an empty string. If not, the state machine will go into the OK state, and otherwise it will go into the error state. We can see that the variable TOK is just like a state variable. It's not a part of the input. Instead, it's decided by the historical data parsed by the state machine, and it decides the behavior of the parser. Its updates are also like other state variables. After the, for example, at the 12th line, after the state machine raising a carrot symbol, the TOK is reset to an empty string. And in other cases, the input character just append to the variable. It's worth noting that the TOK is not numerable. That means it have infinitely many of possible values. That actually caused a challenge to existing static analysis-based work. Although the state machines have critical usage in many security applications, like fuzzing, model checking, or verification, but we found that existing static analysis-based work may not scale well on complex cases in the real-world system. Specifically, one stream of the static analysis-based method would use heuristics to identify the state variables, and they treat every possible combination of these state variables as one possible state in the resulting state machine. Imagine that we have a state machine that have multiple state variables and uh, one of them may not have enumerable values. That means the possible state space of the resulting state machine grows exponentially and that does not scale well to the real world cases. Another stream of work relies on the symbolic execution. They treat every path as a state. And uh, this, will be, this method will be limited by the problem of path explosion. Of course, there's a, another stream of work that leverages dynamic program analysis, which is orthogonal to our focus here. The dynamic analysis, they can infer very precise, very precise state machine, but they require high quality inputs, which might not always be the case in real world scenario. That's for this talk, I majorly focus on the static analysis based method. Next, I'm going to use the motivating example to intuitively show, to, to intuitively illustrate the limitation of existing work. This is our motivating example we have seen before, and on the left-hand side is the state machine. We manually crafted it from the source code. It has only four states, but on the right-hand side, we show the state machine resulting by a state-of-the-art static analysis-based method. Apparently. Even for this very simple program, it generates a state machine that is very complex and may not be that useful. And that basically illustrates the limitations of existing techniques. On the other hand, our technique, state lifter, can extract a compressed state machine even when the implementation is more complex than our, than the, than the most, uh, uh, than our results. Basically, that means we can do better than the ground truth. On the right-hand side, 
I show the state machine extracted by our technique, we can say it, it's even simpler than the ground truth state, state machine that have four states. And also, our implementation is based on abstract interpretation, and we can support multiple state variables and the, probably with non-numerable state variables. And also, our algorithm is proved to be sound. Please refer to our paper for more technique details. Due to the time limitation, I'm just uh, briefly go through how we evaluate our technique. To compare, we compare our technique with the static analysis based method, and we can show that our resulting state machine is four times to 40 times simpler than the state of the art work. Also, we take significantly less time than state of the art static analysis based method. We also compare our work with the dynamic analysis based method. To drive the dynamic analyzers, we randomly, we randomly generate 1,000 valid input message for each protocol, and we show that our work achieves better precision and better recall than the dynamic analysis-based method. Moreover, we evaluate how state lifter may help in the real-world security applications. The first application we, are, we evaluate it on is for fuzzing network protocols. With the enhancement of state lifter, the father can the code coverage can be improved by 20% to 230%, and we can detect more bugs than the baseline method. We also try to use state lifter to help the cyber physical system fuzzing, and we found that we can not only find bugs in the Arduino pilot system, the cyber physical system, but also we can find some bugs in the CPS fuzzers. Please refer to our paper for the details. To conclude my talk, First, state lifter is a static analysis-based method that can infer precise state machine with a high recall. Second, state lifter is an abstract interpreter that can infer state machine from source code. We prove it for soundness and completeness. Finally, we prove that state lifter is useful in many real-world security applications. That concludes my talk. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take questions.